Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome, finally, to the Loki episode finally. for Comic Book Breakdown. Uh, it's been a rough couple of attempted... Rec- it's been a rough couple of weeks in general. Ephraim's been busy. I've been busy. Um, but we're finally here. We have watched Loki. The show has ended. For once in my life... I actually rewatched the whole series before we're going to talk about it. <laughs> this is actually the first episode we've done that we're actually going breaking down a whole season instead of a an episode. And, and I mean, the trade off for that's yeah, it's not going to be six hours long. I yeah, think. exactly. It's not going to be six hours long. You know, it's mainly because of technical difficulties in the past couple of episodes. So we decided to just do an episode of breaking down the whole season, which. You know, the the way I do the podcast, I only typically only cover books that are finished because you can examine the context that they yes. exist in better. Um, it's it's really incredibly difficult to judge a story as the story's happening. And now that Loki has finished, we have a complete picture of this is what they started out as, this is what it ended as, how did we get there and did it work? Uh, and I have to say, this is my least favorite Disney Plus show so far. And I feel terrible saying because it's still such a well-made show. It's beautiful. It's fun. Um, Tom Hiddleston does a great job as Loki. Um, we uh, we sort of enjoyed the path we took, although there was a couple of stumbles and bumps along the way. But you know, we still got up. We finished it, and we did enjoy it. You know, Tom Hiddleston is always fantastic. Yeah. Sil- uh, Sophia De Martino is great as Sylvie. I saw she's becoming a fan favorite. Any new character they introduce in the MCU usually is a, a huge character that nobody knew, but now all of a sudden, like, everybody wants to know. Well, and it's it's going to be interesting, because a, a lot of the <clears throat> Marvel comics react to the MCU, and they'll tend to, like, heighten or lift up. You know, Phil Coulson didn't exist until the Avengers movies happened, and now he's, yeah. like, he's been a big bad in the current ongoing Avengers run right now. He didn't exist otherwise. Sophie's gonna or Sylvie, sorry, is gonna be a weirder character to work because she's kind of an amalgam of Loki and the Enchantress, Enchantress. and then the mm-hmm. second Enchantress, Sylvie, all in one. Um, so who's gonna get more comic focus moving forward? I don't, I don't know. Especially since Loki doesn't heavily feature in a book right now. No. Uh, that's gonna be a little, little strange, a little tricky. But I think the pandemic kind of screwed up publishing plans and all, all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, exactly. The whole pandemic, we could, we could have came out with half of this shit already. Yeah. <laughs> you know? We'd have been way further down the MCU All these movies, man. We, 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 we probably would have been like, you know, Doctor Strange is coming out in December. Holy shit. Oh, yeah. So That would have been nice. Yeah. Um, it is weird to say that, like, having just li- re- I listened to most of the show this morning while I was doing chores... All of the characters are actually pretty enjoyable. Like, I can't sit here and I be agree. like, I didn't like this. No, I, I liked Ravona. Um, well, I liked the arc that Ravona went on. I liked Mobius. I liked B15. Like, which is weird because when the show debuted, B15 was just like a, the hard ass hunter character and I was yeah. like, hey, whatever. Um, and by the end of the show, I was like, B15. Yeah. yeah. Save of the day. Way to go. Um, yeah, I liked her too. You know, it wasn't until Sylvie showed her her actual memory she was like, "Holy shit, this is." Yeah. Oh, I actually was a human. Which I thought that was a really cool way to introduce the idea that the the TVA is made up of variants. It's a cool way to to show yeah. it to the characters, even if they aren't aware of it. Uh, and then seeding that all the way back in episode two when she first gets her mind taken over, even if it was just for that brief second. Oh, yeah. I thought that was a really clever way to do that from a writing perspective. Um, the other writing thing that I really liked, because uh, I, I, when we tried to record episode one, I had brought up that, like, the D.B. Cooper flashback... Oh, yeah. ...weirded me out just because I wasn't sure what it was meant to do. Like, from a writing perspective, why you would introduce this idea. And watching it again, it occurred to me that they, they did that to show that the TVA is aware of things about Loki that even we as an audience don't know. It's a way to prove to Loki in the story we do know everything, Mm -hmm. we have seen everything, even this embarrassing moment that you hate. And so when the TVA then goes to show you accidentally got your mom killed, you have lost every battle you've been in, and you got killed by Thanos, this isn't him going, you're just making things up and these are all CG animated cartoons. He knows that it's real now. 
Yeah, Even showing it didn't him, to him showing him experiences and time that he hasn't even experienced yet that he's going to, and in the long run, getting killed by Thanos and not getting, the, not only not getting the throne that he thought he deserved, but just basically not existing and getting his neck snapped for basically no yeah. purpose whatsoever, no purpose except to uh, protect his brother who he actually does still love. But yeah, seeing that, like, you know, Tom Hiddleston such a, did such a great job, you know, at that part and throughout, and even at the end when Sylvie broke his heart, you know, oh yeah, I feel him, yeah. you know, I really do. Like, well, a lot of us do, you yeah. know. But it, it's it's so great to get th this different Loki, you know. Now, even though, like, you know, um, I guess Nathaniel Richards, I love the part when they're all talking. He's like. You know, telling Syl Sylvie, he's like, "What about you, murderer?" That was hypocrite. I was he's so like, "So glad." He's like, "We're all villains here." I was so yeah. glad that he called that out because that's right. Like, I understand Sylvie's motivation throughout the show was great. Um, I liked Loki's initial motivation of wanting to take over the TVA. Um, both of those characters are characters who lie, manipulate, and again, we see in episode one when Mobius is kind of reading Loki the Riot Act, like. You ripped a man's eye out, and you smiled about it. You yeah. had a good time. <laughs> You're not a good guy, Loki. Uh, and it was cool to see, um, for those who aren't aware, he who, re he who remains at the end he of the show. In, in comic book parlance, he was a variant of the character Kang the Conqueror, who has, he's a time traveler, he's worked with alternate realities, he has like six dozen aliases, but he basically winds out to be a descendant of Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four, named Nathaniel Richards, who ends up getting his hands on time travel technology and then fucks with time for the rest of his existence. Um, he generally is an Avengers villain more than anything else, um, but if you see us refer to him as Nathaniel Richards, it's because he who remains is a mouthful and frankly a little annoying, but legally, he's not Kang the Conqueror. He's not Kang the Conqueror. He's so we actually, Nathaniel Richards. So for us to call him Kang right now is, well... A little untrue. Yes, it is. It's a little untrue. And so it, Very I, much so. I did really enjoy him being like, you have both hurt people. You have killed people. To accomplish your goals and to reach your aims, you've done it to get here. What makes me worse than you at this point? Exactly. Nothing. You just don't like me. Which is fine. And I love that even he's like, I don't care. It's, I did what I had to do. Yeah. Exactly the same as you guys did. Great, great villain motivation. Yeah, great villain motivation. Um, that was fantastic. Uh, yeah, there were so many moments. Uh, what was it? When Miss when Miss Minutes appears at the castle at the end of time, my wife and I were eating dinner as we were watching the episode, and I was literally like opening mouth and I was gonna say, "Wouldn't it be great if Miss Minutes popped up just to like break the tension?" And then boom, she popped up. And I, was I, like, I thought oh that too. God. I'm like, she's I'm like, she's not just gonna be limited to certain parts. Like, I just have a feeling she knows more than she let's on and yeah sure exactly sure enough she popped up i i almost choked on my spaghetti because i was just like are you kidding me like oh it, I, I liked how uh one of the videos i watched i liked the description of like they treated miss minutes in that scene like basically the whole setup or like make sure you collect everything or level up enough to be sure before you face the final boss <laughs> so you know i really like that so miss minutes was sort of like that like you know prerequisite of like you know you sure you got it are you sure you want to go to this all right here's the final boss well you know? I, I like that moment too um and the big dark castle yeah. you know yeah well and i like that moment too because they they slash nathaniel offered loki and sylvie in theory what their mm -hmm. base motivation is you can beat the avengers you can be the king you always thought you'd be you can rule time and space and you can wake up and be happy Together. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah, two Lokis in the same timeline. Um, and watching Tom Hiddleston react as Miss Minutes is selling him on, like, you can beat the Avengers, you can you can do, kill Thanos, Thanos, and you can, you there's the like Infinity a tick in gauntlet. space. You can have the Infinity Gauntlet. Um, that's Tom Hiddleston's acting ability. Isn't something either of us have questioned, um, but holy crap, yeah. he does a lot of just a quiet lot. facial work in this. Um, it's just absolutely amazing. Uh, it is. It's incredible the depth that they gave Loki. Which, which is frustrating because I don't think they gave him a lot of depth. I like, think I think that um, 
cons- considering that uh, once again this is uh, a different version of Loki, sure. and they uh, well, well let me let me rephrase that they they've given him more depth, I guess you can say. You know we're not we're not done with him. Yeah. I mean they announced that like he's going to be in Doctor Strange as well, and there's a Loki season That's two it, and a season two. There's a season two now, so. I mean, we could definitely explore deeper into the character, but um, just I, I guess depth, as in more of an emotional side, yeah. you know, of him. Like I don't know how often, like I said, that he's had his heart broken and he's gone. He, I, I just as a whole, we haven't seen Loki go through this much emotion, you know, of what to do, what's right and what's wrong. You know, he's always known for things of you know the the wrong side. You know, he's always done the wrong side. He even said that himself. But now choosing between what's not good and bad, but right and wrong. You know, it, it, that was the big clash and the climax. See, you know? I don't think that was the clash. Cause that's, I, I specifically went into this keeping an eye on Loki's arc because I was, I was dissatisfied with Sam's arc when we watched Captain, mm-hmm. Captain America and the Winter Soldier, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So I went into this, like I said, we watched it. I mean, it is Captain America and the Winter Soldier now. It, it is now. <laughs> um, so I went into this specifically trying to watch Loki's arc, because I was wondering if that was one of the things that's, that frustrated me with the mm-hmm. show. And he does have an arc, but his arc is ultimately him learning to trust, learning to trust other characters, as were shown by him interacting with Mobius and Sylvie, um, and him learning to work towards non-selfish goals not which, necessarily good goals which is a massive deal which is a huge deal and that's ultimately where he his climax moment is with Sylvie when she's got her blade against his throat and he's telling her the only thing I want is for you to be, okay. to be okay and then she betrays him and I'm confident probably part of the reason I'm upset with the show is that Loki goes through this character arc where he does a thing for someone else and then it blows up in his face she betrays him kills Nate, ruins reality, depending on your perspective. Um, So yeah, I wouldn't say that he was motivated by any kind of I wouldn't call it a desire to do good. He wasn't looking to be a hero. He was looking to help the person that he loved. Well, that's what I said. It wasn't about good or bad. It was about right or wrong. I I wouldn't even say that. So Because he, emotionally, he just wanted Sylvie to be alright. To be alright. And that's and that is one of the things that well, I which is, which I agree on, but the the whole idea was to basically he was on the side of you know, and, and that's the thing because he was like, you know, if we kill him, you know, all kinds of things will be messed up. But you know, we have to stay on this path, you know, to where if we don't kill him, it, it's not it, it's not about I guess them not taking over the T T V A. I guess it was more about him thinking what he had to do was right in order for reality not to go out in a whole multiversal war. Basically, Loki did not want war. Sure. So he didn't want war. It's, Whereas old Loki, yeah. in the first Thor, going back, huh, he basically wanted war. Well, That's why he led in the Frost Giants. And it's also the inverse of Loki's position at the start of the show, where he starts off like you're the the argument becomes is having unfettered free will worth it knowing that there are people who are going to choose to do bad things and that's just mm-hmm. how nature works or is it worth it to give up free will in order to have stability and peace and by the at the start of the show Loki was going let's burn the place down he literally tells he makes the joke with Mobius yeah. oh what are you going to do burn the place down and I did like an episode Five, uh, when Loki's like, "What are you gonna do?" and Mobius goes, oh, I'm "Burn the burn TVA the down. down." I did really like that as like a nod because Mobius says, "We can start with my desk." Yeah. And then in episode two, we start with Loki with his feet up at Mobius's desk, desk. and that's really where the spark starts for yeah. them. Uh, so I thought that was a really cool writing structure uh, point with the show ending where it began to some degree. Um, but yeah, I like, 
And maybe it's maybe Elizabeth Olsen just set too high an emotional bar for me with WandaVision. She got nominated for an Emmy. 23 Emmys for the 23 show. 23 Emmys for WandaVision. Christ Very on impressive. Christmas morning. And it nodded the director, Matt Shankman. Who be texting me? Uh, okay. It nodded him now, uh, the director's helm for the new Star Trek movie. Yeah. So, like, WandaVision. Paul impressive. Bettany. Paul Bettany, Paul Bettany Paul Bettany went from sitting on a curb in front of a producer's office with the producer saying, dude, you're never going to work in Hollywood again, to getting this role and getting nominated for an Emmy for his role as Vision. The role that yeah. Joss Whedon called him when he was sitting on that curb after this motherfucker told him that he was never going to work again. Now this dude is nominated for an Emmy. That's Kudos to you, Paul Bettany. That's amazing. I hope he takes it. Jeez. I hope so, too. Oh. I don't think he will because there are a lot of great nominees. Yeah. But, hell, but, that's that's amazing. And we both thought, if you go to our WandaVision videos, that, yes, Elizabeth Olsen did a great job, but Paul Bettany did an incredible job as well. Yeah, and that's... Absolutely. I, I think part of, part of the problem that I have with Loki is... And, and to some degree, Falcon and Winter Soldiers, WandaVision's everything ultimately revolved around Wanda as a character and the Vision as a character, where the other two shows have definitely been a lot more about the plot yeah. driving the character growth as opposed to the character growth being the plot. Um, yeah, I can see that. It did help. There was three more episodes of WandaVision. Sure. But that also helped with character growth yeah, as well. Yeah, that's definitely. the... The mystery of what was going on in the show tied into Wanda's emotional yes. state. The Agatha literally was there, yeah, literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, where Loki doesn't have almost any of that. It's it's really amazing. Right before we started recording, you'd mentioned episode three and four, like the pacing seems to shift. And it's episodes one and two pitch you on it's the Loki and Mobius show. This is our main cast, and it's going to be about their relationship and how they learn from each other and change. But then episode three, you get a big record scratch, and it's the Loki and Sylvie show, actually. Yeah. And it's about their relationship and how they interact with each other, which takes it to the end of the show. And I I can't help to think from a story structure standpoint, like, episode one should have ended with Loki and Sylvie together, which which is, there's a lot of crap you got to condense in there. Um, but from a structure standpoint, the show should have been more, I feel like, about them and then getting to the point at the end... Because ultimately, Mobius doesn't play an important role by the end of the show, um, and he's removed technically. Um, it's it's hard to tell Pretty if much. Loki was sent. Now that we have multiple timelines in play, alternate realities, it's hard to tell if Loki was sent back in time to the TVA, and he is meeting a Mobius and B fifteen who have been overwritten by a new timeline. Mm -hmm. Did he get kicked sideways into an alternate reality? where the TVA was founded by Kang the Conqueror, and they don't know him, because neither mm. one of them seem to recognize him at all. No, not at all. Um, and we're told that Mobius is familiar with Lokis. Um, you know, you get the scene with him, classic Loki, alligator, and kid Loki, and he's like, I've, I've never heard of an alligator Loki. Like, yeah, it, it, that doesn't make any sense to me. I, I do love that part when uh, basically Loki is... Um dissing kid Loki and class Loki is like you need to show him more respect and Loki's like really so what what well, what was the reason why you got prick what was your nexus event and then kid Loki goes up he was like I killed Thor Thor and he walked away and I'm like and I'm like show this kid some respect yeah like who I'm like who in the right mind could say I killed Thor and like and this is the the nerd in me mm -hmm. that's what he did in the comics that's like, and the episode was called Journey into Mystery. Mm -hmm. Obviously, an allusion Obviously. to Thor's original comic. Yes, so um, his origin comic. But also a nod to Kieran Gillen's run on Journey into Mystery, starring mm. Kid Loki, in which he organizes the death of Thor ultimately in order to save Thor. Like ev everybody, I'm like, I understand why everyone loved classic Loki, and I'm there with you. He yeah, did, I'm, I'm there with you too. Amazing. He was great. Uh, Richard E. Grant's really cool. Crushed I like it. him. Yeah, he did. He crushed uh, it. But everybody's been, like, loving the, like, comics-accurate costumes. Fucking nobody has said shit about Kid, Kid Loki. Loki's, looking man, exactly, exactly like, like Kid Loki. Does. Like, as soon as I saw the, the headdress, I'm like, that's what he wore. The, the and headdress, then the black. The hoodie. The, the hoodie, the, the long black everything. sleeves, man. Like, and it's, it's perfect. Yeah, and it's the perfect blend of 
modern comic book costume design being a little bit more practical than old school, and then you look at classic Loki, and he looks a little bit like a clown. Um, <laughs> and Kermit. That's, that's yeah, a both. little bit like Kermit, sure. Kermit. Uh, and that's just Jack Kirby, baby. And, and I do, I love how they did not derive from giving him the little yellow spandex yeah. things, you know, they still gave it to him, you know, well, which is great. And it's really cool that he ends up kind of stealing the episode for everybody. Yeah. Because it, it goes to show that a well-written character, it doesn't matter what they look like to a certain it's degree. True. So long as they're dope. As long as they're and dope sells- and the actor crushes it. That's, uh, I love, that's probably one of the things that I loved most about that particular episode. Um, the, the scene when he's conjuring fake Asgard. Fake Asgard, yeah. Uh, Eliath. I believe that they're playing the ride of the Valkyries in the background, just slowed. Just slowed. Because you get the, like, dun, da da dun, dun, As, as, like, in, in, as it's his, his pacing, yeah, and his pacing is where we get the song. Yeah. You know, which which I thought was a really cool and nod. it's cool because it, it's so like such a dramatic scene yes. where he's keeping up like Asgard so that's that's pretty cool and I, I double checked online to make sure that I had the, I was like did I have the song right in my head am I just making this up um, and then the you know the ride of the Valkyries contextually is a song about the Valkyries mm. opening the gates to the to the afterlife so that victorious warriors the slain warriors can move to what comes next in much the same way that he's clearing the road to Eliath mm-hmm. to open up so that Loki and Sylvie can move on. So it's not a 100% accurate metaphor, um, but I loved the thematic. Idea. Yeah. That's, I was like, that's such a specific piece of music. and everything Just else, for that part. Just for that one scene. Um, I really enjoyed the music in this one. What's uh, what's great is oh. uh, that, that scene when classic Loki, uh, where he's uh, conjuring up a fake Asgard. Oh, there's... <laughs> That part was cool. Oh. <laughs> There's a fun edit uh, on YouTube where um, somebody um, took that scene and put in uh, the song Holding Out for a Hero by Bonnie <laughs> Tyler. <laughs> so it's him doing it. He's like, I need a hero. Sure. You know, I was like, that's actually pretty cool. What a shame that so, we got it two episodes earlier. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but I thought that was really cool. Um, but, yeah, the music. The music is great. I love, love... The uh, even though it's a short theme, whenever whenever the uh, Loki title card comes on at the yeah. beginning, that really that science, like, yeah, it remind it reminds me a little bit of um, it's the movie of Clockwork Orange at the very beginning that that theme that Clockwork Orange thing, it sounds a little different, but just just the certain tempo of that short theme reminds me of that and like I, every time i hear it i love it you know I, it really it's a great introduction going into the episode you know just telling you like this is this uh, th- this is going to be far beyond what you expect it's kind of like twilight zone esque that's you know the, this this series in particular got a lot of theremin use lots yeah. of like yeah kind of yes. stuff and i love it Yes, um, it's, me too. It's so kitschy, 60s, 70s sci-fi. It really is. Um, you know, for... I don't even feel like I grew up watching that stuff, but, like, I still associate that sound with old science fiction. Yes. Uh, and it kind of helped gives everything that feel. And then you would switch between that. Um, lots of strings, I feel like, in this soundtrack. And then lots of heavy bass notes. Like, mm-hmm. when they did the, the shot of Rocksmart um, in episode two... Um, man, I got Godzilla theme vibes. They're like, dun, dun, dun. Like, oh, man. Yeah. I was expecting Godzilla to come out of the water and, like, smash the place. <laughs> it was great. Uh, it's like, what kind of timeline are we in? What kind of apocalypse is this? Godzilla. Then, yeah. Loki Godzilla. Oh, oh my God. That would have been helmet. amazing. <laughs> oh, would oh, have been awesome. Oh, no way illegal will let that go through. But. <laughs> oh, Godzilla God. was once part of Marvel Comics. Godzilla Loki. Oh, that would have been great. <laughs> oh, that would have been, yeah. What a perfect, that's, I hate that people are calling alligator Loki croaky, and I get it. Because it's like Crocodile and Loki. But he's not Crocodile. He's, not he's crocodile. an alligator. He's they an say alligator. it explicitly. Alligator Loki. How hard is it to say Alligator Loki? Just say Alley Loki. Yeah. That Just works that. better. That yeah. works pretty good. Because that's... I, Loki like, Gator. Like, what? what, what look, come on! That's, I was trying to think, like, during... I was like, Alley Loki Gator. No. No, that doesn't roll off the tongue at all. Croaky, I get. But I think it's dumb. It, it is dumb. Um, in, in one of our lost episodes, you had made the jokey... 
joke, uh, which I still think is, is a really... Uh, it, I'm frustrated that that didn't get used or brought up anywhere within the show. <laughs> like, especially with Moby's... It was right there. Especially with Moby's being like, man, you like to talk a lot. Like, come on, someone, someone use Somebody. it. Someone use it. Come on. We got maybe next time. Maybe next Come season. On. Fuel. You got fuel, man. We're, bro- we're, we're we're good. We're good at that. Come on. Uh, so episode, episode one and two, to me, again, are probably the strongest because you have such a clear relationship with Loki and Mobius, and it's Loki trying to convince Mobius that this authoritarian regime is bad, and it's this dude who basically is just running on religion. He's just standing there going, no. Nah, this has to exist so that everything's at peace and I believe in it because I need to believe in it. And that he was born in cool. the timeline. And yeah. everybody was born in the timeline. Uh, and then, like I said, episode three, you get your record scratch. It becomes the Loki and Sylvie show. Um, which, I do think Sylvie was a good character and I liked, I liked the tragic ending of the show. Um, the idea that uh, at that moment when she's again she's got her blade to Loki and he's like I've been where you are yeah and I believe he's referencing the idea of like I've been fighting for nothing but revenge before and he knows that it doesn't work out it doesn't lead anywhere and he it was, saw his fate and it was really cool after she kills uh, Nathaniel that she just kind of crumples like you can kind of see the expression on her face where like she kills him and she doesn't seem to feel better at all. It doesn't fix anything. Nothing changes. As a matter of fact, she might feel a little worse. Yeah. Because, and I actually did watch it on the way here. And as soon as, yeah, <laughs> as soon as she stabs Nathaniel, and um, I do love that we're calling him Nathaniel, um, he, there's no grief in his face. He winks at he, her. He smiles, he winks at her, and he says, See you, soon. See you soon. And he does a little giggle and he winks and he dies. Yeah. And I think that, in a way, because he, right before that, he was, she was like, aren't you going to beg for your life? Yeah. He's like, no, I'm good. And yeah, so after she stabs him and there's, there's, there's no fear, nothing in him. It's almost like basically a uh, see you soon as in you fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you see the difference in her face like... Did I fuck up? And then she's just sitting there. Well, I think and that's the last thing we see of her. I think it's also an amount of, of dissatisfaction. Yeah. Because, again, her, her, her motivation whole purpose. is she's punishing this person. Yeah. And even he's sitting there at the edge of her blade, unrepentant for any of it. Killing him doesn't do anything for him in terms of it doesn't validate yeah. her existence. Mm-hmm. And then for her, it doesn't do anything because it doesn't murdering's not going to make her feel better. and it Which is what Loki was trying to reiterate to her. Yes. He's been there before. Yeah. That's, I, as I was rewatching that scene, again, I was trying to think, like, how would I have written it? And I was like, well, at some point, you know, you, you have to throw your weapon away and be like, the, in order to trust me, I will put myself at your mercy. And he does. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. And then they kiss. And I was like, okay, cool. And then she betrays him, which... You know, obviously we're getting a season two, so that'll get explored more. She can't hopefully. trust, and he can't be trusted. And I, I, I specifically did my rewatch with that in mind because I was like, that's the thesis statement basically for the yes. show. And it does the show actually does a really good job of Loki continually trying to prove himself to Sylvie, um, and, and Mobius, yes. Mobius, and then Sylvie. It, Mobius kind of started to get it going. Yeah. And then once he interacted with Sylvie, he was like, "I'm all in with you." So it wasn't like until, um, you know, Mobius was still kind of on the fence until Loki brought them to uh, the Mount Vesuvius Nexus event. Yeah. And then he was like, you know, "Oh, run!" You know, I love that part. He's like, "You're all gonna die!" Yeah. And then you know, Mobius figures it out. They're like, "Holy shit!" Nothing has changed, and we're still here. So that's when he started to actually trust Loki in that. So well, that's I, I feel like because even there, even with that moment, he still had a degree of Loki can or like that's where he started to trust Loki. But then Loki flees with Sylvie at the end of episode two, and when they recapture oh, them, yeah. you have he's punishing Loki, throws him in the time loop with Lady. Oh Sif, yeah, with Lady which Sif, was cool to see her again. Which was great. Yeah, that was uh, cool. Mobius doesn't trust Loki until C... I think it was C-120? 
mm-hmm. gets disappeared. That's when he starts to go, oh, there oh, is something yeah. wrong here. What do you think's going on? That's when he goes all in with, oh, I'm going to trust Loki. We'll burn the TVA to the ground. You're lying to me. You're lying to everybody. This has to go. Um, which was, again, a really good arc for, for Owen Wilson's character, who starts off as the hardline believer and ends the show as kind of a skeptic. Hopefully he's not completely erased or reset. Uh, and then, of course, we have Ravana flipping that script, where Owen Wilson is shown... I don't know. I mean... Mobius. Where Mobius is shown... <laughs> Everything you know is a lie. And he goes, oh my god, it is. We need the truth. And then you look at Ravona, and it's everything you know is a lie. And she goes, I, I don't care, because I prefer the lie. Mm-hmm. Which is the exact same argument Mobius had with Loki at the start of the show. Um, so it's cool to see that character growth for Mobius as well. It's, it does frustrate me that he kind of got sidelined in favor of Sylvie. Yeah, which I, I get it. I, I get that too, but um, as it was like just as soon as we were getting used to their... You know, dynamic. Yeah. They separate them. Yes. You know, yeah. And I, I don't feel like Sylvie's inherent distance from anyone else because of the way she grew up. She's easy to care for, but she's also hard to care about to I agree. a degree. Yes. Um, I can see that. Yeah, and so that's that's part of the reason I, I have trouble with the show is because she doesn't go through an arc at all. Just like literally, it's like the end of episode five. She's like, I guess I kind of trust you, Loki. And then next episode, I don't care. It doesn't matter. My revenge is more important yeah. than my feelings for you. And it, again, maybe the thing that really upsets me is my heart's broken. Um, and it's not bad writing. I'm just sad. Yeah. I mean, you know, she did tell everyone, including Loki, that, you know, no matter what happens, you know, this was my path the whole time. Whether I care about you or love you or not, this was my intentions. You know, and literally nothing stopped her. And, yeah. yeah. To, to be fair, uh, a lot of the characters do a lot of, like, spelling out as far as this is what I am or this is what... There's, um... I think... I can't remember if it was episode two or three, but Sylvie has a moment where she looks at Loki and she goes, this isn't about you. Yeah. And there's a part of me that I was then like... Is the show really about Tom Hiddleston's Loki, or is it really about Sylvie? Because she doesn't really change at all. Like, but if that's the case, is it a compelling story if your lead character doesn't grow? And then if she's supposed to be your lead character, then why give us two episodes with Tom Hiddleston Loki? That's frustrating. Like, I I do think I don't know how. Maybe I'll have to sit down and she. Out, like, it's I possible really she might have been the main character, but. But Tom Hiddleston Loki might have been the narrative to basically he he himself was the the plot detail the, that the drove, route in exactly sure but that I, that drove the series but she was the main character. I would still argue then if if this were our comic book series, Loki meeting Sylvie would have been your episode Z your issue zero. And then issue one would have been the Loki and Sylvie show. Let's get mm-hmm. to know each other. This is like so much of Sylvie is kept distant from the audience, even. Like, it's one thing for Loki not to know, so he can't manipulate her, which I understand. But, like, there's so many moments where Loki's talking to Sylvie about her history or her parents or how she grew up, which is all stuff that, as an audience, we also want to know. But it's not like we didn't even get a flashback of her, like, happily with her parents or anything along those lines. No, we just got her. Um, we, we got, got her playing, and then she got... We got one moment. Yeah, we got one moment, and then she got... Yeah. So, yeah. Ul- ultimately, it's hard to care about Sylvie. The thing we care about is her relationship with Loki, which is why when she betrays him at the end, that that is effective. That does hurt. Um, but, yeah, I don't feel like Sylvie's a very deep character throughout the course of the show um, and that frustrates me again it's it's you're, you're co-headlining this basically yeah. we get nothing nothing ah <laughs> I just, like I said just frustrates me I uh, see what you mean um, I do like I said I liked Ravona's arc uh, I, I just like I said before um, if we if, if we could have gotten at least one or two more episodes sure you know, I, I think that would have made more of a difference. I do think this show, especially having watched, 
I mean, I feel like Falcon and Winter Soldier closed out pretty solidly. Like, it didn't really leave a lot of dangling plot threads. No, I, 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 don't, I don't think it necessarily did. Yeah. I was pretty, you know, that that show, as good as it was, had some pacing problems too. Yeah. But overall, I think we were both satisfied in how it ended. Yeah. WandaVision left things open, and I was okay with it because I'm expecting it to get addressed again. Yes. And it's, it's weird because Loki does the exact same thing, but I'm way more frustrated about it this time. Knowing that we're going to see elements of this show up in Doctor Strange, we're getting a season two, um, so you know, I, it's not like we're never going to see Ravona again. But and, like, and I feel that since Doctor Strange, now it, it's quite interesting to me that just only a couple of months ago that they delayed a few of these movies, Doctor Strange being one of them, and now we're getting Loki season two. So I feel that somehow, if it comes out on time, I think we'll be getting season two of Loki before Doctor Strange. Yeah possibly it's it's either going to be before or after man my my timeline of mcu i, ha- I have to is so screwed i think doctor strange comes out next either next december i could be wrong it's either next december or early 2023 because i, I know remember. the the next couples we've got in theory hawkeye this fall as a disney plus show we got eternals in november Spidey in December? Shang-Chi in September. Shang- oh my god, I forgot about Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi in September, Eternals in November, Spider-Man in December. <laughs> um, and then I don't, like, that's beyond that. Uh, I don't even know at this after, point. After, god, I, after, I can't even remember what's yeah. after Spider-Man. Because I know we've we've got, I mean, I know they're filming, you know, She-Hulk, Moon Knight, Miss yeah. Marvel, The Marvels, um... Secret Invasion's coming up. Secret Invasion. I don't think they've started... No, Thor, Love, and Thunder? Thor, Love, and Thunder. Next, next, next year, year, I think? Yeah. Thor, Love, and Thunder next year. Um, World of Wakanda, I believe, is next yes. year? Wakanda Forever. Wakanda Forever. Oh, World, World of Wakanda is the, the series as well, yes. There we go. Um, I mean, it's got to be Doctor Strange next year at that point. I like, believe it is. I, because Feige, Feige himself said Doctor Strange is going to be like... It's going to be the event movie for yeah. Phase 4. So, Doctor Strange is going to be the culmination of what what we saw at the end of Loki is going to lead into Spider-Man No Way Home. This is how we're going to get, possibly, Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man. This is why Doc Ock, Alfred Molina is in this. It, it's interesting to me. Let me, let, me just, let me just say this real quick. It's interesting to me is that they pluck... Alfred Molina Doc Ock, who, in my opinion, was the best villain in that Spider-Man trilogy. Agreed. Was the best movie Spider-Man 2. Yeah. And, to me, Electro was very underrated in Amazing Spider-Man. Electro was cool. Before he gets his powers, he's incredibly frustrating and annoying. Yes, very frustrating because his character was nothing like that in the comics. He wasn't a geek or anything. But... I, I thought Electro was really cool, and then all of a sudden you throw in Dane D. Hong Green Goblin, and it just completely botched the movie. So I think Feige and Marvel Studios knew that. I think just the Green Goblin in general is really hard to yes, adapt. It like, really is. You know, it, it's they, I, I believe that as well. But I like how they plucked these two villains to be in No Way Home. The two, in my opinion, two of the best villains on screen that Spider Man has had. And put them in this. And then, so that's a villain from Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, and that's a villain from Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. And, and in turn, you can also form a Sinister Six with this as well. Sure. So, I don't know. For Andrew Garfield denied not being in it. How many freaking people that are in Marvel properties now have denied, no, no, I haven't helped Tottenham Marvel. No, I mean, I'm not going to be in there. It, uh, that's always the trade-off. That's always the trade-off. We, we had the woman start who will be Jennifer Walters and She-Hulk yes. denied she was going to be in She-Hulk. And then, like, um, not even a month later... Jonathan Peters denied... I mean, in theory, he said that Kang would not appear... Majors. Yeah, Majors, I'm sorry. Um, he said that Kang would not appear at the end of Loki. And he in was theory, right. Kang did He actually was right. But he appeared. He appeared, uh, yes. The actor appeared. He, um, that's what he. That's what he purposely. They probably told him. Feige was like, just tell them Kang's not going to be. Yeah, it. they're, and they're you're asking, actually right. Yeah, just <laughs> legally dodge this question. Yeah. Um. So you know, it's it's always hard to take the casting rumors at face or whatever. Um. That's why I try not to pay too much attention to it. Um. Like, you know, you didn't tell me that Don Cheadle was going to be in Falcon and Winter Soldier, 
And it made it that much more cool when he showed up. So, like... Which is very strange, because two minutes on screen, and he got nominated for a Best Emmy. Yeah. That's... <laughs> for a Guest Emmy. Even Don Cheetah was like, I don't get it either. <laughs> <laughs> he even tweeted that out. He's like, I don't get it either. I was on screen for not even two minutes. I'll, I'll but I... It. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> with that, I just have a feeling because you know Loki was already airing when the Emmys came on. I just got a feeling that like, since these Marvel shows have been taking like not only the world but Hollywood by storm, and WandaVision got nominated for all those. Actually, Disney Plus in general got nominated for a total of I'll seventy-one. Say the, Emmys. the streaming numbers for Disney Plus yes. are are or, super or, good. Yeah, off the charts. So I feel that like um, it's possible we could have Loki nominated for a few Emmys. I feel that um, either Richard E. Grant or Jonathan Majors could be nominated for a guest guest Emmy. See, that was you know um, my my wife and I have the same complaint about Jonathan Majors, and it's that his character was super fucking obnoxious. I at first I thought that too. Yeah, I really did. Yes, but the more in depth he got into his story, because I thought. They portrayed him at first as like like a grown up kid. Yeah, that's what I kind of thought. He, he, the he apple, definitely had some you know, Willy Wonka vibes going he, on. And yeah, I need to retire, really and someone has to take my place. Has to I take guess my you'll place. have to murder me. Yeah, which exactly isn't exactly Willy Wonka. But it's not. It's not a sadistic Willy Wonka. Charlie Bucket fights him to the death. Yeah, it's like you you gotta kill me, man. <laughs> it's like you gotta kill me, but you know. You gotta fight the Oompa Loompas first. Oh my god! I don't god. know. <laughs> it's dangerous. A grim, Loompa. gritty retelling. This all is... of a sudden, like, oh, we're ooh. not gonna get into this now because I now I'm now it's in my head. Now Who did I'm that like, grim and gritty Robin Hood movie. Don't do that because oh. I'll be like, you know, this chocolate new chocolate mutation can turn this huge Oompa Loompa into a huge seven foot <laughs> Oompa Loompa Hulk. No, I'm not getting into that. But he turns the kids into <laughs> weapons. Into weapons. It's a weapon X lab. That's what happens. My he captures the kids. Like stretched and he's like, Mr. He's stretched, Mr. Fantastic. Mr. Fantastic. Oh and then God. each each one and all of she's the giant blueberry. Each one. You you okay, punch her and she like shoots acidic and blueberry shoots acidic juice. Blueberry at you? juice. Yeah. Yeah. Augustus Gloom like. I don't remember what happens to Augustus. Oh, he got drowned in the chocolate. I know he got the chocolate, in the chocolate river. but I don't remember like what his terrible the, the oh, terrible Oh, um, it was supposed to be what? The furnace? No, not the furnace. He that was the, that was from Gasol. The marshmallow. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. right because um yeah, that's right. I don't know. Because that doesn't lead to what it leads to the marshmallow room. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, we're, we're, we're going, going a little off we're track. We're varianting here. hard okay. on this one. Yeah, that that's why I'm like let's let's go back. Yeah. Let's go back cuz over here. Go back over here because now my, my mind Majors. is working. Jonathan Majors as he who remains. As he who remains, <laughs> even when, even the way he was dressed, yeah, in a way, yeah. And I thought it was, I thought it was really cool how like he had the future Kang technology of like you trying to hit him and whoosh, you know that quick move. As soon as he did it, I'm like, that's a Kang does that because. In the Avengers Mightiest Heroes cartoon, Kang is one of the major villains in that. Okay. For actually almost half, if not almost the whole first season, uh, Kang is the villain. Okay. In it, yeah. And that's one of his things is he's at the, you know, the quick teleport thing, you know, and they made him really badass in the cartoon. That's, I, I felt like given that this character has in theory existed for probably eons, uh... It would be pretty dope if, like, when we get the introduction to Kang, like, we see past Marvel movies. We see major events of past Marvel movies, but then we see, let's say, Kang looking on them. Sure. You know, let's say, like, when, if Cap, when Cap brought down Hydra, you know, when Thanos collecting the stones. Like, during the scenes that we actually see, we see it from a whole different perspective from, let's say, Kang's view. Sure. I don't know if they would do it. It's something they did in the... Earth's Mightiest Heroes cartoon. Okay. You know, which I thought was really cool. So, like, let's say if we see something like that, you know, that um, all of a sudden, like, all of a sudden we see an onlooker and it's Kang and he's looking at things that have happened in the past. It's it's going to be such a weird bit of storytelling. Yeah, very much so. Be because in theory, the only version of Nathaniel Richards who survived was He Who Remains... Except for now, if there's an infinite amount of timelines, you're going to have an infinite amount of Nathaniel Richards. This is where we get Iron Lad, possibly, yeah. too. And, and that's one of the things that I like, is it opens up, you could see Iron Lad as a member of the Young Avengers, 
Um, in the comics, he has a brief relationship with Cassie Lang, and mm. we know we're getting Cassie in Cassie. Ant-Man, and we know we're getting Kang in Ant-Man. Um, Quantumania. You've got Immortus took over ancient Egypt at one point. Oh, in so the that's comic probably books. where we could get introduced to Iron Man. There was there was a big Fantastic Four oh, storyline where the true. Fantastic Four went, went back in time back in ancient Egypt, and they overthrow Immortus. And especially, I don't know how much the MCU is going to play with the idea that Kang is a descendant of Reed Richards or not. But that was something that immediately interested me, given that they Very cast so. a black man as Kang. Are they looking to maybe cast a black man as Reed Richards this time? See, I'm wondering that myself. Because I think that is a really cool way to add some diversity to the Fantastic yeah, Four, who are I th- I traditionally th- a group of white people. Yeah, I think that would, I think that would actually be pretty cool. Um, that's what I was wondering. I was like, are they going to do that? Because I know it's you know Kang existed like over a thousand years after he did, so you know generations change. But, yeah, I don't think that's a bad idea. You know, you make Reed Richards uh, black, and then, you know, you stick to Sue Storm and, and Johnny Storm being white. Sure. You know, Ben Grimm, you know, who knows? You can make him Spanish, I don't know. <laughs> Not saying like Grimm. Ben, I mean Grimm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think that's a pretty good idea, too. I think so. But just, you know. But, yeah, I, you know, I, I believe... I think you told me, and I feel like one of my coworkers told me that Fantastic Four is going to be the end of Phase Four. Yeah, I believe so. So it would be a cool way to kind of spend this whole this whole season of the MCU exploring alternate realities and alternate timelines, and kind of end the threat of Kang with the Fantastic, the Fantastic Four, Four defeating Kang, but the existence of the Fantastic Four kind of leads into Kang's continued existence at the same time. And so then, long as Reed Richards exists, in theory. Yeah. We'll have a king. And then, actually, that that would work pretty cool. Phase 4, the Fantastic Four, would be the last movie in yeah. Phase 4. And then, at the end of the Fantastic War movie to lead to Phase 5, you tease Dr. Doom. Yes! But, you know, yeah. Yes! Uh, yeah, the... Yeah. That would be fantastic. Would uh, no, be no pun intended on this time, but that would be fantastic. Uh, still pretty good. Still super good. <laughs> but, um... But yeah, that's my wife literally locked, walked, looked over at me at one point. She's like, do you think this guy's obnoxious? And I'm like, yeah, he's kind of killing me. And she's like, yeah, okay. And we, we finished the episode, and I was like, it, it makes sense if you've been alive since like the beginning of this timeline and you've just been overseeing it by yourself. Yeah. You'd probably go a little crazy. You'd probably go a little nuts. Um, so, and she was like, no, I get it. it it's just not fun to watch. <laughs> And I, I, the, I had the same vibe personally. Yeah, the second time I got a little more used to it, you know. But that's the thing. Those first parts when he was being rather obnoxious, yeah, it was, to me, it was a little cringy, yeah. you know, a little bit. But it was the more subtle parts that really got me. And I think in contrast, maybe that's what... There was a sadness to him. Yeah. That I thought came exactly. through really well. Especially when he explained, you know... Um, he's lived millions of lifetimes like when he started explaining that then you you felt like the sadness like in his voice that like he was like i lived so long yeah like i just i've lived so long that there's basically no reason for me to live anymore that's i you know? i really felt it uh i can't remember what loki says to him but he's just looking he's like buddy and there's something about the way he delivered just that line. Just, yeah. buddy. And I was like, oh, man, I feel it. Like, the weight of ages, I feel it on him, man. Oh. Yeah. So that's, t- to be fair, and then the trick of it, too, is he is playing a variant. So the version of Nathaniel that we meet in Ant-Man Quantumania could read completely yeah. different. That's exact. That I think even... Um, and I don't know if this is kind of a weird analyzation, but like even that contrast of like Nathaniel being this little obnoxious and then in turn being a little sad to just looking at that statue of Kang and seeing, even just seeing exactly his yeah, stance, his, his look, his uh. tuck behind his back, just seeing the difference in just his stance in that statue. And seeing the difference in Nathaniel Richards basically saying this is definitely a different type of version of King. And he reiterates to them continuous times that, like, you think I'm evil? You have not met 
my variants. You haven't even met the bad versions. You haven't of even me. met the bad this versions. This is the me trying of me. to do good things. Exactly. It's like, <laughs> this is. Like, this is me trying to do what's best. Yes, I've done the same shit you have. I've committed murders. I've done this. I've done things that I have not been accustomed to that I don't agree with. But it was all for the sake of keeping the sacred timeline together. And just, you know, just just seeing that and how he is, as opposed to basically, like, this gang as a statue and being like, this world... I'm going to conquer this world, that world. I'm going to conquer this fucking world, too. And there's nothing anyone can do about it, you know? He was... That's the thing. He was giving Loki and Sophie a choice. Yeah. Do you think King the Conqueror is going to give anyone a choice? No. <laughs> well, and that's... That was one of the things that I thought was really interesting about, about the way the show ends. Yeah. Um, that was what got me started thinking about, like, maybe Loki didn't get pushed back to the, the main timeline, but got pushed... To like a, a an offshoot a branch sideline where yeah. where now instead of founding the TVA with benevolent purposes, this version of Nathaniel, this Kang has founded it with dictatorial purposes. Yeah. Um, he, they, he. What does he want us to do? Does he want yeah. us to just let it let the timeline keep? And that's we see the two characters. They don't know. They don't know. Um. You know. And we've seen Mobius. We've seen B fifteen at this point. We know because it's not. And I uh, just sorry real quick. because yeah. it's not. The the time blizzards yeah. in this. It's, it's not. Kang. It's Kang. Directly. Directly. Yeah. Exactly. You don't see a statue of a time lizard. You see his statue. He's like, I'm run, I run this shit. Which I, I thought it was really, like, it's just, it's pure serendipity. Um, but I've been putting together a collection of Avengers Volume 3 mm -hmm. at the moment, which, which ends in a big Avengers versus Kang conflict. I just, I haven't got there yet. But I was reading an issue of Maximum Security written by... Uh, Kurt Busiek, I want to say Jerry Ordway, I might have that wrong, but one of the things they reference in there is they're like, oh, man, Kang just killed the TVA at the end of time, so like he's up to shenanigans, Earth's a bad thing, and I was like, oh, how perfect, that just as I'm reading, uh, just as I'm watching <laughs> a TV show featuring the TVA and potentially Kang, I'm also reading a comic, like, I didn't, like, I vaguely knew this was a thing, um, yeah, but yeah, that's the only place I remember the TVA and the comics from is Avengers Forever, again written by Kurt Busiek. Um, that had I, to do with Kang. Yeah, and I I don't remember how that book ends. It's been so long since I've read it. Um, but yeah, that dealt with like traveling through the time stream and multiple alternate realities. Kurt Busiek was basically cleaning up plot holes um, from like forty years mm. ago. But uh, uh, but yeah, it was just an interesting bit of serendipity of like oh. Yep, Kang fucking people up. That's what he does. Yeah. That's what he does. I actually remember, um, actually, the, the best Kang story I remember, probably because it's the one I actually read throughout, was happened a few years ago in Uncanny Avengers. When, sure. With the Apocalypse Twins that we... We thought it was. We thought they were the main villains, but it turns out no. Kang was the main Kang villain because he went back in time. He scooped them up as babies and then just took off and he raised them on their own to basically manipulate them so he could have cosmic energy from uh, certain celestials, so he can gather all this cosmic energy, gather all these beings from time, and create his own little team. And um, it was it was pretty awesome. That's. Along those lines, I do think that's also probably one of the reasons that I'm frustrated with the way Loki ends. Because the show, the show spends the whole time building up the idea that the TVA... I mean, it honestly plays up the idea that the TVA is a bad thing. Yeah. That we need to kill the, kill the, the timekeepers. We get to the reveal that the timekeepers are actually just androids. They're fake. It's bullcrap. Move along. Yeah, Tom, there, Tom. There's something else that we need to stop. And from a, from a narrative standpoint, it is incredibly frustrating when you get to the big villain at the end of the show, and they're not really a villain at all. I'm an actor. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a, <laughs> no, you're not acting, love, you know? I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just doing, oh, uh, what's his name from Iron Man but 3? It, at least The big that, Mandarin reel. We had Killian behind him yes. manipulating things. Yeah. And, so at least there's someone you get to punch and blow up at the end of the show. And at least we're getting the real Mandarin, but... Yeah. yeah. It, it's very, especially coming from a yeah. comic book background where you want a villain at the end of your story. You want someone to get punched or thrown in jail or arrested mm -hmm. by S.H.I.E.L.D. or murdered, depending on your comic. It's very frustrating to get to the guy at the, behind all the scenes, and he's just a dude. 
Yeah. And it's, you know, at least Wizard the of Oz... The man behind the curtain. And at least, at least with the Wizard of Oz, you get a sense of, I'm reluctant, and I'm only doing this because it's the only way I can survive in this land. I want to get out of here, too. And when he leaves, he takes Dorothy with him. With this, you just get a guy who's like, I've been manipulating time since the dawn of time, and I guess I'm sick of it. Kill me. And it's just so flat. And it, a little bit. And there's... We spent the whole time investing in the relationship between Loki and Sylvie, where neither one of them feel like bad guys. So it's not as if I was rooting for, like, yeah, kill Sylvie, that, let's that's, go! That's a good point, because is the payoff them running the TVA? What kind of payoff is that? Yeah. Of them running the TVA? That's what I don't get. So they're going to take his place, so that means they're going to be bored in the Citadel for Ions? And I actually never thought of it that way. That, that's, as he was pitching it, like... The way he pitches it, he makes it sound like you two would work together to run the TVA and prune the timeline. And I I think they pitched it that way to keep you from thinking of the Sylvie-Loki conflict. Yeah. Because re- re-watching it, it definitely feels more like there's two routes. One of which is, kill me, and you can take my spot, which is what Loki would have done in order to prevent multiversal war. Or, run it yourself. Yeah. I mean, I suppose, which, I suppose Sylvie's the kill it and don't worry about it at all route. Um, yeah, which that that's what we were hitting at in the first place um, is a multiverse. Well, actually, the first video we did, um, I actually, which I'm not saying I'm the original, but I actually said that this is exactly what we're leading to is a multiverse war because they gave too many hints. Don't you do that. Otherwise, you'll start this. And I'm like, well, this is where we're going. This is what's going to happen. This is what we're going to go into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And basically, we didn't know how, but we knew it was going to happen eventually. You know, but it just... The, the sta- we didn't know about, let's say, the stakes of, you know, what we're going through. So I guess, in a way, it was sort of disappointing. It was like, okay, you have this choice, or you have that choice. You can run the TVA and basically do what I've been doing for millions of years, and what are you going to benefit from? I don't know. Or you can just kill me and everything gets all fucked up. So it's it doesn't sound like a win-lose. It just sounds like you want to basically solve less problems or you just want to basically cause all the problems in the universe. Like, I don't... It, that's that's an interesting point, actually, that it, you it's make. A, it's, it, a, there's, it's a frustrating ending. It, it is. It's a pretty frustrating ending. And... There, yeah, there wasn't much payoff. You know, oh, they should do this or that. You know, it was... Well, if they take over the TVA, then we're just getting what we got. You know, what makes what's going to make the TVA special if Loki and Sylvie take over? I, sure. Yeah. Well, and that's... I, I almost feel like... Because at this point... I Are they going to free everybody? See, I don't... Do they have the power to free everybody? I, and that's... If, if, Mobius and B-15 didn't recognize Loki. So these yeah. aren't even the same characters that he's been interacting with. And yeah. That's, did the sacred timeline get rewritten, or is he a, a reality adjacent? Yeah, is he is he in is, an alternate type of? There's there's a part of me where I kind of really want the next step in Loki's journey be now he has to travel through realities and basically put together like a multiversal Avengers team because if there's one thing Loki can do, it's put together a group of Avengers to save think, everything. That would be, and you know it, it does. Cool. There's a degree of like. Nathaniel's plan was the plan that worked for the time that it worked in, but there's also a degree of, you know, and again, maybe it's because I've been reading comics, these comics my whole life, but, like, the multiverse can exist without the multiverse getting each other up, too. Like, there's, you don't really get too many, like, this whole other reality is going to go to war with another reality yeah. all that often. And it's typically because most people are good people, um, and, you know, especially with his whole thing being like, it's me. I'm the one who ruins all of reality. Yeah. Why don't you just go and kill every Nathaniel Richards out there? Why did you have to wipe entire timelines from existence? Like, if you're the worst thing in existence, sure, serial kill yourself throughout existence. Why are you killing everybody? Yeah. And is, Why aren't is, you using Elias yeah. to kill all these Kangs and Nathaniel Richards and Immortuses. Sure. And, or or go back in time and kill Reed Richards so yeah. you can never be born. Um, there, there's a... 
it's the timey-wimey time travel crap where the rules don't necessarily make sense yeah. and we just blew what rules that did exist up now. Back to the Future was bullshit. Yeah. I mean, I keep saying that every time we talk about Marvel and, and time travel. Another show that we haven't covered. Um, I mean, we didn't talk about any of the Easter eggs, but I mean... That's all. It was a lot. You know, a lot of other people are talking about the Easter eggs. Yeah. So, you know, I know the, you the Thanos it. copter, you know, which was a great little tease. Yeah. Um, James Gunn himself said, like, I would. He said, like, a few years ago, he wrote a tweet saying that, like, if Marvel in any way introduces the Thanos copter, you know, into the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I will live a happy life. And sure enough, <laughs> like, yeah, they said it. And then he retweeted it again. He's like, yes, my life is now complete. They introduced the Thanos copter. So I like that. I like the uh, everything in the void, the dark aster scene in there. I thought that was pretty cool. Helicarrier. Yellow, helicarrier, yellow jacket's helmet. God. As, as a helicarrier lover, man, they just can't seem to survive. No, they can't. Even in Deadpool. So Yeah. yeah. Man. But yeah, I did like the, Throg. The Living Tribunal's head. Oh yeah, Living Tribunal's head, yeah. yeah. Throg with Molnir right there next to him. Um, yes, I did. Um, in the scene when you've got all the Lokis in the bowling alley, behind Classic Loki there was an arcade game called Polybius. And that oh. was one of those things that I was like, I have to see if that's a thing. Um, and sure enough it is. Apparently it's like an internet urban legend where people swore back in like the 1980s there was an arcade game called Polybius that was being used by the government to either, like, train people or program people, and every so often, like, the men in black would come through and, like, abduct people or some shit like that. And then at some point, all the all of them just disappeared. Um, there's no evidence that would indicate that this game ever existed. Um, but, yeah, that's something I was like, oh, well, that's why it doesn't exist. Because it's that there. That timeline <laughs> got pruned. That's, that's kind of cool. Funny. Um, That's pretty funny. The the USS Elridge, the ship that appears, oh yeah, um, is is part of a, a famous like naval mystery where I don't remember the name of the project, um, but there was a project that the Navy was trying to do somewhere along the eastern seaboard, and they activated like a device, and the ship, as best we know, disappeared. disappeared. No one knows what happens happened to it even to this day. It's same kind of thing, like urban legendy kind of thing. It's all super classified, um, but it's kind of again kind of cool to be like, oh, it I got, do like the attention cool. to detail. That's pretty cool. Know? Yeah, that's that's really cool. Like that's, all these like disappearances or, or whatnot. I'm surprised they didn't throw Jimmy Hoffa in there. Well, that's but. <laughs> there's one moment where the Loki's are like walking around what looks like a crashed plane, and that was something where I was like, is that like Amelia oh, Earhart's plane? Is that a yeah. thing? There's there's That's true. There's no like markings on it, so it's it's yeah. hard to tell. Um, I've seen people online asking about the weird ball-headed bird things oh. walking around. I have no idea what those are. Mm. I don't believe I've ever seen those in the comics. So I mean, <laughs> I did see that um, when Throg was bouncing in the jar, and you heard Throg. Ah! I I read that actually. Chris Hemsworth. Oh yeah. Voiced that. That scream that Hell Throg yeah. does. Yeah. Hell so Chris yeah. Evans voice Throg too. I thought that was really cool. You know, and somebody like did a sketch of one of the Mighty Thor like blank white covers of um, Throg jumping at Alligator Loki. Hell yeah. Yeah, so I thought that was really awesome That's too. That's adorable. Yeah. That's per perhaps the single biggest thing that I was let down by is that President Loki was like yeah, a two minute two scene minute with a two minute character. Two minute character. He gets his hand bitten off bitten and off. lets see him. Yeah, like, that was it. I thought that uh, was cool too when it first showed him. Yeah, Zagan, which one of you, which one of me are you supposed to be? This is a nightmare. Surrounded by a bunch of other Lokis, like. And I, uh, uh, I don't think most of, I don't think most of them were meant to really be, be Loki. anything. Yeah, they were probably just. That's yeah. one of them. Based on his costume design, it kind of really looks like the Green Arrow from the CW show <laughs> Arrow. He he had the domino mask and the hood and oh, like a quiver yeah. and everything. I was like, is that meant to be a dig? Um, <laughs> and then one of them, the one at the end, who was standing next to Tom Hiddleston Loki with like the red hair and the weird like visor on. Yeah. Um, his costume is green, but then with like black horizontal stripes, and then he has like yeah. a ball and chain. And in the comics. 
Loki was the one who gave the Absorbing Man oh. his powers, and his power typically he wields a ball and chain, and so he pressure. wears prison clothes. Creel Crusher. Creel Crusher. Um, I don't know if that was meant to be like a nod and a wink at Creel or not, because the character doesn't look anything like him otherwise. Maybe um, it was. You never know. Yeah. Like That's, all the nods and kind of details that they put in this series, you know? Sure. That's. I was really hoping with boastful Loki that we'd get like a story behind his hammer. Um, that's what uh, we, that's 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 what bothered me too. Yeah. We got a little story behind Kid Loki and Classic Loki, but yeah, we got no story from Boastful Loki. Well, we we know that he defeated uh, Captain America and Iron Man. Oh yes, yeah, that's actually really cool. It, it, it's cool, but yeah, I was more interested in you. You clearly have a hammer. Yeah, is this Thor envy? Were you just like, well, I'm not worthy for Molnir, so I'm going to make this. Cinder block. Yeah, like, I, I would have appreciated. Like, was something. he worthy and Thor wasn't in his sure timeline? Like, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. So yeah, that's th- there's a little bit of like, I don't, I don't, I don't know, a little bit. Of, I would have liked more on some, and it's it's of course the trick of you have a six episode show with five or six plot members, anyway. So you got to keep moving. And each episode wasn't even an hour. Yeah. It was just under. Yeah. Which was actually a little disappointing myself. You know? It, I do feel like the... In terms of setting you up for the next episode, they did do a really good job. Like, every episode that ended, I was like, no, I want the next one now. Yeah. Like, please. Um, even if I was a little... And I think part of that's because, I, again, I was a little frustrated with... Especially, like, episode three with Lamentus three. Um the whole idea of like we're just gonna spend an episode with these two characters getting to know each other and I'm like yeah cool like we got a little downbeat we kind of got to start our narrative over again anyways and then I don't feel like they get to know each other almost at all yeah it's incredibly frustrating yeah thing. it's like they sit down next thing you know it's like we're off to do the mission it's like you guys kind of kind of chilled and got to know each other yeah for our sake and that's even again even if Sylvie needed to stay distant from Loki because that's how she is show things to the audience. Yeah. When he's like, what was your mother like? Give us a flashback of her interacting with her mom, even if it's a short flashback. And then when she cuts back to Loki, she dodges the question because she doesn't trust him. But Mm. we can invest in her narrative. Especially since so much, so much of that episode is just, here's a sci-fi vista. (laughs) Quick character scene. Here's another sci-fi vista. It's very pretty, but it's wasting time. Yeah. It's the same complaint I had with episode three of Falcon and Winter Soldier when we went to Madripoor. And we get so many shots of just like, here's crime. And I go, we get it. We get it. It's, <laughs> it's like, we get it. This it's is dumb. a bad place. Yeah. Like Zemo reiterated to us that it was a bad place. We, we were told it's a bad place. You showed us a bad place. We got it. Let's get, move on. This <laughs> is like, let's get to the plots, people. Let's get to some it, character work. It, it, you know, interesting is I saw a video the other day and, um, the guy pointed out that um, so there's like uh, in the Eternals trailer there's like a huge monolith in the air and the design of the monolith resembles very much the design I don't know if it has one to do with the other it very much resembles the design of Kang's bracelet that he used like the black really? with the glowing cracks I, yeah I wanted to bring that design up because that's actually a, a Japanese art technique called I believe it's Kintsugi Mm-hmm. The idea being that in um, feudal Japan, like if you would break like a, a cup or a dish or a bowl, you would put it back together using like silver or gold or another material. Uh. The idea being that just because something is broken doesn't mean that it A, isn't useful, or B, that it can't be beautiful. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's... I like that. I, well, and it really reflects the fact that Kang has been breaking... Or not Kang, but Nathaniel the TVA has been breaking realities but in order to create something beautiful and so to then have that visualized with his keep at the end of time and then the same kind of a to finish that point um, is really on on like it's a perfect visual representation of what he's been doing but it's also a good visual representation of Loki's yeah. who the show continues to tell us are broken they're miserable. They're not meant to be with anybody else. We're the god of outcasts. Mm. <laughs> they're broken characters, but that doesn't mean they're not beautiful, beautiful. or that they don't have value. Or they can be saved. Can't yes. be saved. Um, and again, I, I thought that was a cool visual way of representing that. I did not 
notice that with the Eternals at all. So that'll be an interesting thing. To I go back did and until I saw that, and you know, he referenced that, and then he showed a picture of the monolith in the air in the trailer, and I'm like, oh, it does have a rather similar design. Interesting. And he also pointed out that inside uh, Nathaniel Richard Citadel, that same design is on the walls too. Yeah. So I don't know if what significance one has with the other, but I thought that was interesting. Maybe they're made out of the same material. That could be it. Could be interesting. Yeah, that could be interesting. Es- especially if they're going to go with the idea that the Eternals have existed like since the dawn of time, kind of thing. Yeah, that could be a material that just isn't present and, on Earth, but is present in the greater cosmos. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I thought it was interesting that, like, um, just bringing time up real quick, that when Nathaniel Summers, when he started explaining to him his, I guess, certain origins of him and his variants, he said ions ago, in the thirty first century. Which means he does, he more than likely has no idea the, I guess, essence of time. Like, I don't know if he thinks he's rather in the past or the future, or he's just there. He just exists within that span right there. So, like, <laughs> it reminded me of Star Wars a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Sure. You know, but I, I thought that was cool uh, the way he said that. You know, that, like, even he doesn't have an occurrence of, like, what time it is, basically, or where he is. He's sure. just there. Well, if you're at the end of time, yeah, you exactly. aren't in the past or the future. You're at the end of everything, so to speak. Yeah. Um, oh. Uh, just, uh, I'm sorry, real quick. Yeah. Um, remember at the beginning, uh, when it first says the Marvel Studios logo, but you hear all those voices talking. I, I wanted to bring this up at some point. Yeah. Yeah. You hear all those voices talking. One of them, which is one of the videos I saw, one of them, towards the end of it, was Calcilius from Doctor Strange. And it was him saying, because there was a scene where he's he's in that big thing when Doctor Strange throws it and he gets captured. Doctor Strange is like, whoa, the, what is the your The bands purpose? of Sitorak. Yeah. Sorry. Sidorak, yeah. Well, well, well no, that, that thing, that piece he throws at him. Yeah. And then that, that's the, I thought the bands were, no, those are the Crimson bands. In, in the comics, the crimson bands of Sidorak are like an energy construct that you do. Oh, but that's actually in, in the movie. That was what that they, was the how they reimagined it oh, as the gotcha. bands of Sidorak. Okay. Yeah. Well, when he's it captured me that, too. yeah, that's what kind of confused me a yeah. little. But Darth Vader asks him like, "What's your end? What's your end game?" And then Cassilia says, "Time. Time is the worst evil there is. Time is the." Time is the villain of us all. Oh, that's interesting. I thought that was interesting, too. I was like, he said that? And sure enough, like, it says, it shows the video where he says time. Time is time is the most evil there is. Time yeah. is the villain of us all. Well, that was the whole and reason he wanted Dormammu to take over Earth. Was because because in, the, in the dark dimension, there was no there time. There was no time. Yeah. Exactly. And so, yeah. Sure enough, when I watched Loki again on my way here... I specifically tried to hear when he says it, and sure enough, it was towards the very end of where it says Marvel Studios. You hear him say, time time is the villain of us all. Time is evil. Interesting. And I'm like, interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, because I won't lie, I kind of hated that version of the opening. <laughs> like it, <laughs> it, it was very, it was a little confusing. Yeah. I'm like, are we supposed to con- deconstruct what everybody's saying, or just throwing random things at us? Yeah. So... I thought that was interesting that one particular person, like, you know, deconstruct that part sure. where he said, time is the villain, time is evil. Yeah, and that's kind of cool. Yeah, I thought that was really cool, too. It How? Just years back, and well, bringing it up now. It's, well, and that's, I, I don't think that led to this moment. I think Probably that's a, not, a but nice it's, it's cool that, like, they're like, oh, snap. Yeah. We did that, huh? Well, then let's take this moment and just put it here, sure. you know? Wow. What, you know, how did that happen? Shh, shh, shh. Nobody needs to know. Yep, that's so... They just they just need to know it happened, and we were like, yeah, we knew that was going to happen the whole time. <laughs> so much of the creative process is finding those kind of little moments and just taking advantage mm-hmm. of them, because that's, you know, there were so many interviews with the script writers for uh, Endgame, <clears throat> no, Infinity War. Um, oh, Marcus and... Uh, McFeely. Yeah, and yeah. when you when you get the moment of like there was an earthquake off the coast of Africa and everybody was like oh, Namor and they were like we just we had to pick something that you couldn't deal with to illustrate that one Natasha feels responsible for everything and that two you can't deal with everything and then you fast forward I think it was like a year or two later and they were asking them like the same question they were like well you know 
maybe it's Namor. Maybe. Like, like, you no, literally said that wasn't the plan. It wasn't Namor. Now all of a sudden you're like, maybe it's Namor. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't don't act like you, you left that there the whole time. Yeah, I'm I'm you cool know? with it just being a coincidence. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. But don't sit here and be like the plan was always Namor when maybe the plan wasn't, and you're just going to take advantage of a, a nice line. Just it's fine. <laughs> Don't fucking like, worry just about leave it. it be, man. Not everything was clever. connected. Yeah, exactly. Oh. It was clever. Okay, it was clever. Yes, I do think there is stuff that is connected, but I don't think all of it is yeah. a perfectly executed. Um, what's the meme from? It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Of the one oh, guy the with char- the board behind oh, char- him, Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. think that's necessarily Kevin Feige and the writers of Marvel Studio. Like, it's fine. Yeah, don't worry it about works. It, people. You know what you wrote in the past ha- actually happened to work with what you're writing now. Yeah, you it's know. it's more of a matter of making sure you're paying attention to ro- yes. what you wrote before, so that you can build on it and do something else with it, it. It's just proof that like you know your product, you know, still exists now, doing a good job in telling plot threads. Yeah, you know. And one might have anything to do with the other, but hey, your plot threads are so good that like it just happened to fall upon it, you know, which actually was pretty cool. Because when I heard that, I'm like, holy shit! I know in my head they didn't mean to set it up that way, yeah. But it just happened to oh, fall right in place. Sure, because I mean, you, and the the trick of it too, especially with that opening listening, like of course the stuff that stood out to me was the like, I can do this all day moment yeah um and i've seen some other people um list off some of the other lines that were said um most of which to me don't seem to mean much of anything you've got steve and peggy's music playing um mm-hmm. for their dance yeah which you know maybe that has something to do with something because it's time travel friend <gasps> are we getting like something with steve where he's taking all the infinity stones back yeah. oh my god is that him? no god no, i'm no. so they just play i'm so sick of people it. wanting that too like i want a series of steve putting all the stones back where they came care. from i don't care why why would we have that series we, when we know he put them back yeah what is that going to do like the, there you go. There's just if back. if if Steve okay if Steve like disappeared and he never came back as old man Cap then maybe sure but he came back yeah okay or, or if he appeared but he like he was like Cable where he had like a robot yeah. arm and you know his, yeah. his face was scarred up and he's like oh man putting the Infinity Stones back sure was tough but yeah Sam I or think if you he, should be Captain America then I'd be like what happened yeah. dude or if he came back he was normal and all of a sudden like at night time when there's a full moon he turns into werewolf yeah, he turns into werewolf you know, holy yeah. shit yeah. werewolf Captain America as, as the sun sets as the sun sets sure yeah, exactly but no he was just he was just old old man Steve that's yeah, fine exactly he like, was old man Steve I get it it feels like a plot hole. I don't know how he puts the Aether back in Jane Foster. I really don't. Does it make sense? No. Everybody wants to know the interaction between him and Red Skull. Yeah. I don't you know. fucking care. The thing is, like... <laughs> that's the thing. If he, if he, he might know who Red Skull is, but if he gets there and Red Skull is like, Steve Rogers, you know, son of blah, blah, blah. You don't know if Red Skull would know him personally. Sure. You know? Like... Well, what's he going to do? Yeah, what's he going to do? Oh, I should start the new... I don't know. He's a cosmic that, like, He's a cosmic being. Yeah, he's a you know, cosmic being. He's not, the, he's not even the Red Skull anymore. Yeah. Oh, I guess I'll be a Nazi again. Uh, I yeah. think I have to kill you, maybe? Yeah, exactly. Uh, again? I don't know. My thoughts are coming back. This is my weird cosmic hell. punishment, and I guess I'll... Like, I guess I'll... Oh, shit. You again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what the hell, man? That would be... I, would, I wouldn't mind a, like what if one shot episode and it's Steve putting them back but it's played for laughs like that and yeah. he walks up and Red Skull's like oh Steve Rogers son of this Rogers what an asshole right and he's <laughs> like ah oh, come on it's you like, really? like, throws Red the Skull. stone at him and leaves it's like Jesus here he's like cool yeah thanks <laughs> he's like alright thanks Steve I'll just be here for the rest of eternity I yeah. guess see you not in this lifetime. Uh, <laughs> uh, pokey pokey. Suck it, Steve. Ah! <laughs> Enjoy bagging your wife. I'll be stuck here at the end of time. <laughs> and wait for people to kill themselves, I guess. It's like, I guess so. But I, next month we're getting what if. You mentioned what yeah, if. Yeah, that's... We uh, we don't... We can't talk about Black Widow yet because my wife and I still haven't seen it. We're, we're struggling behind. Yeah, I'm fine not talking about Black Widow. I I tried to get her. I did try to get her to watch it yeah. earlier this week when she was off. Uh, 
her first day off. I spent the day writing, and then at like seven o'clock, she so was. What, she just doesn't have much motivation to go watch it. That was so. The first first day she was off, um, I finished my writing for the day. It was like seven o'clock. She was like, "Oh crap! I was gonna see if you wanted to go to the movies." And it's like, "Oh well, I didn't think I didn't think about it because I was working." But okay, and like mentally, I was like, "Well, you know, we'll just try again tomorrow." I'm off at twelve thirty. Plenty of time. Come home the next day, and I'm like getting ready for my shower and everything. I'm like, "Hey." you want to go see Black Widow? And she's like, no, I kind of don't want to leave the house. Like, I'm kind of comfy. And I'm like, okay, trade off. I'm kind of thinking about just buying it on Disney Plus just so we can see it at least. It's actually going to cost you guys about the same amount of money. And that's if, I mean, you know, we've got the the A-list. So, I mean, in theory, oh yeah, in theory it's more expensive. In theory it's more expensive. But I, at this point I don't care. Yeah. I'm like, I want to see it. I will pay $30 and we can watch it a couple times, and it'll be fine. And she was like, I don't want to pay attention to something. I just kind of want to, like, chill out and zone out. And I was just like, you're killing me! <laughs> okay! Okay! I might buy it and watch it myself! Um, but yeah, so we haven't seen it yet, so... I would have been... I would have gone to see it with you, but I had to, I had to close this whole week. Yeah, like, so life has been chaos. Yes, it has. Um, so it's, I'm not worried about it, but yeah, we've got What If coming up. Um, which hopefully will uh, be a Black, cool, like, just Black Widow was good. Yeah. It was good. Yes, I enjoyed it. There was some um, plot threads on it. Um, there's definitely something that uh, I definitely did not agree with. You will definitely not agree with. Oh, but, interesting. Yeah. Just uh, story purposes, maybe we can see why they did it, but wholeheartedly I did not agree. Okay. But I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I'm hoping we can see it soon because I'm going to be out of town next week. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to see it before I'm out of town and can't go see it while I'm out. Um, but we'll see. Let's like I say I know I'm going to get there eventually. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to what if. Yeah, me too. The trailer looks like a lot of fun. The trailer looks great. I like the animation. Looks cool. Um, I do like the um, I do like even though we knew what if was coming, we didn't know what episodes were we were getting. So, um, just seeing the what if Killmonger saved Tony Stark, I'm like, that's an interesting one. Yeah. That's actually pretty cool. Um, I was a little disappointed it wasn't Robert Downey Jr. Um, as Tony Stark because it, it, was, it sounds like... It was what, RDJ, Chris Evans, and I think Brie Larson aren't reprising their roles, I think they said? Yeah, I believe and, so. And, and I think for the most part, they've got pretty much everybody else. Yeah, they got everybody else yeah. for the most part, yeah. Which, um, which I agree is a bit of a shame. It, it, it is a bit of a shame because, like, what? They, they pay RDJ $2 million just to do, like, what, 20 minutes of voice work? Come on, man. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so when I heard, like, Tony Stark's voice in the trailer, as soon as I heard it, I'm like, that is not RDJ. That sounds like a little more obnoxious version. I was I was also annoyed because in for probably the past, like, 10 years, um, animated Tony Stark has generally been Adrian Pazdar. Um, from the Heroes TV show. Yes. And he's he's not... In, uh, in Earth's Mightiest Heroes, he, he does... Yeah. It's either Avengers Assemble or... No, or it is Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Yeah, and, that's, and I yeah. think he does a good job. And I think he does a really good job, too, because he's not necessarily trying to be RDJ. Yes. But you can... He's trying to be Tony Stark. Yes. But you can tell it's him. Yeah, that's what I like. A lot of these other guys in the cartoons and whatnot, they're trying to be RDJ as Tony Stark. And just like in the trailer, and yeah. it doesn't. As soon as and I heard him talk, obnoxious. I'm like, yes, exactly. I'm like, <laughs> it's not gonna. RDJ somehow walks a very fine line between yeah. obnoxious and charming, uh, and that's a yeah. You know, the only other person I feel like I I've seen walk it really well is Johnny Depp, uh, mm. who either you're gonna like the work he did or you're gonna be frustrated by him the whole time. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's. Yeah, it's yeah. I would not want to be cast as Tony Stark. I don't know. Yeah, because there's there's a short part where like you know after Killmonger sings, he's like, "Do we know each other?" And like when he says that, I'm like, "He already sounds obnoxious." Even when he says that, he sounds a little obnoxious. Like yeah. you're trying too hard, man. I don't know if that's where like more 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 R D J Tony Give me Stark. More RDJ. Give me more R D J Tony oh, Stark. Man, yeah. So, but you know, I love that at the end of the trailer, you know, we hear Chadwick Boseman as T'Challa Star Lord. You yeah. know, and like, it didn't happen, but I was almost, like, you know, a little tear going down. I'm like, oh, Chad. It's, it's going to be real interesting watching that particular episode, seeing if it's going to pull up. The, like, if it, you know, I, at this point, like, I associate Chadwick Boseman with tragedy because he died. Um, 
and I hope the episode doesn't reflect that. But like, there's going to be a little bit of sadness. It, it me looks going like into a it. fun episode. Yeah, it really does. Which will be nice because the. I mean, I do think Bozeman did bring a nice bit of lightness to T'Challa. He did. Um, but for the most part, he's a pretty serious character. Yeah. Um, generally, other characters riffing you with him was the fun part. Uh, I do not freeze. He froze. He froze. This is <laughs> like an un- so like antelope in like daylight. Antelope in advice. So cool. What are you talking about? Um, I never freeze. So that'll be cool. I like cool. that. You know, when, you know, when Shuri's recording, delete that footage. You yeah. Know, like, yeah. That'll Char- be interesting Very charming. See. Very charming man. Uh, you know, we've, We've also been told that what if's definitely tying into the rest of the MCU, and now that we have a multiverse, the multiverse. it's possible this is just going to be like, hey, now that we went from one timeline to a bunch of timelines, this is what those timelines look like. How closely those will get pulled into yeah. live action stuff. Is it what if Spider-Man had the cloak of levitation? I think so. Like, that's one. Yeah. Um... We've got Marvel Zombies. Marvel Zombies. Um, um, Peggy Carter. Peggy Carter. Captain getting Carter. Getting the Super Soldier Serum. Yeah, yeah. Captain Carter. That's Captain Carter. Uh, it looks, Doctor Strange looks like he's the Sorcerer Supreme, but it looks like he tapped into Dormammu's, the dark energy. Oh, yeah? That's, I, I like, by the, and... Hey, everybody. Ben here. Uh, I was editing this episode of Loki stuff, and we've kind of reached the point in our discussion where Ephraim and I aren't talking about Loki anymore. We start to talk about some of the upcoming Marvel projects, and we go on a very long rant about spoilers that we've seen online for some of the upcoming Marvel stuff. And as we got towards the end of that rant, I realized we're spoiling stuff by talking about spoilers. Um, so if you don't want to be spoiled for any of this upcoming content, like we were spoiled and like it angered us, please feel free to skip ahead. I will have a timestamp on the video, uh, showing you where you should jump to. If you're okay with this, it's nothing that hasn't already been on the internet. I mean, if you're on Facebook and you're paying attention to Marvel stuff, you've probably had this stuff spoiled for you too. Uh, damn you Funko Pops. Um, but yeah. Check out the timestamp below. Uh, Fast forward to where you need to be. uh, And thank you very much for watching this video. Otherwise, I hope we don't ruin anything for you. And we will see you next time. Thank you very much. Freaking pops. The Funko Pops. They give away so damn much. The fucking... The Spider-Man Pops. Already. We we haven't even gotten a trailer. And 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 I'm Mr. Like anti-spoiler over here. And then I'm just scrolling through Facebook. And it's like, oh, hey, check out the new Spider-Man Pops. No spoilers ahead. No no thing that says no spoilers ahead. No no nothing. No warning. Look at the rest of our pictures. Just, hey, fucking here's what his costume looks like. Look at all his dope suits. Uh, It's like... Yes, these suits are dope, but I did not want to see these suits until the movie. It's it's really frustrating. To now now me seeing now I've seen the black and gold suit. Like it's it's gonna look amazing, yeah. but it's like I've, we've seen it. Yeah. And then now 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 you're teasing us that Spidey's gonna uh, his armor's gonna interpret with like the uh, you know Doctor Strange's sorcerer powers. Like why did you do that? It, it's such a spoiler. It is, and he's. And we knew Dark Strange was going to be in it, but then you introduced a pop of him. Yep. You know, <sighs> it, it, it's, God, it's, it's getting so frustrating. Incredibly hard to be part of geek fandom when so it much is. of geek fandom that, is just like, tell me everything now. That's why I was spoiled no. by uh, Mecha Godzilla being yep. in the damn movie. Man, is his pop just scrolling, scrolling, scrolling? Yeah. Look, just want to let you know this is a spoiler, but hey, we're gonna show you the picture outright anyway. Stupid. Yeah. Incredibly frustrating incredibly frustrating like we like i said we haven't even got a teaser or anything and you're just throwing out spider-man pops and and that's and like it it kills me because i feel like marvel studios is so secretive about plot details and casting exactly We, we just spoke about people who who have a deal have to pretend they don't have a deal and then you, you fucking you get a toy deal apparently and the toy deal can do whatever the fuck they want just here's your here's your Hasbro Legend Spider-Man yeah. figure with six different effects added in. No, I didn't want to see that. I wanted the trailer. I was about to say that <laughs> too. Part of the movie. It, it's not only Funko, but then like you know, there are reports like, oh, there's a leaked image of a Lego set. Yeah. You know, featuring this Legos character. Especially. Legos oh, especially. Legos especially. Yeah, some of, they teased a uh, like oh a Lego set of like Doctor Strange and Spider Man fighting like some sort of monster that looks like Shuma Gorath. You know, yeah. I'm like, shut up! <laughs> I don't 
want to hear Captain, this. I feel like Captain Marvel had some stuff along those lines yeah. too, where they were like, "Oh, here's the here's scrolls." Scrolls. No, no, no. Like I could guess scrolls were going to show up because it's a Captain Marvel movie. But get the fuck off my feet. Exactly. It's so frustrating. It's so frustrating that we're getting spoiled by you know out of everything toys. Yeah. Toys were getting spoiled. And it really... And it's, and it's not even like I follow toy blogs or anything. I don't... Yeah. I, I didn't... I don't follow Funko, but everything else that I'm plugged into, whether that's comic stores um, or online comic retailers or geek news websites, all of... And I get it because it's news and news creates clicks and you want people's attention, but it's everything I don't want about fandom. Yeah. Just... Ugh. Just, just let me experience exactly. it. Exactly. Let us experience it firsthand. You know, now we know all these suits are going to be in it. Now we know he's going to have, you know, the powers of a sorcerer. Now we know Doctor Strange is, is in it, and it looks like he's shoveling snow or something. I don't oh, my know. God. I'm going like, to have to do a little recording where it's like, warning, we rant about spoilers for upcoming Marvel movies where we spoil a bunch of stuff. Spoil a bunch of stuff. Please. Spoilers ahead. Yes. Either <laughs> skip till this part or enjoy but, watching us cry about stuff yeah. that the internet already told us. But, is. like, overall, my, my main thing was, like, okay, so the Funko Pop Doctor Strange from What If. He has a lot of purple underneath, and he's going purple. So I assume that, like... I suppose he does. Yeah. So I assume that, like, he might have taken hold of, like, dark energy. It, it looks like that, from the way that the trailer was put together, that episode with Doctor Strange kind of feels like the Marvel Zombies episode. Mm. So I'm wondering if those two things are tied together. If if that a death possible. If he taps too much into Dormammu and he creates a world without death, but in doing so he accidentally creates oh. zombies, maybe? Um totally speculating. Um because we, we, we also saw from the trailer that uh Captain Carter is teaming up with it looks like Howard Stark Iron Man. Oh. Um the, yeah. the big uh, it's called the big uh, iron monger looking suit. The the Hydra Stomper, that's what it's called. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could see how it start. Yeah. Oh, what is it? Oh, it's the Hydra Stomper. Wait, so it's called Hydra the Hydra Stomper. Yeah. What, what what else did you? A little what, practical. What hey, else am I gonna words. call it? What, do you, what am I gonna call it? Iron Man. Jeez, come on. Yeah, it's like come on. A oh, generic <laughs> joke. <laughs> It's, 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 why should I call it Iron Man? This thing isn't really made of armor. It's yeah. made of titanium it's not made of armor at all. That's my, it's not such a low percentage titanium. of armor. That's what ridiculous. So, <laughs> and of course we're getting what if Star-Lord was taken by the Ravagers. Or what if T'Challa. Oh, what if, oh yeah, T'Challa yeah. became I mean, Star-Lord. He, he is technically still Star-Lord. He is Star technically Star-Lord, Star yeah. Yeah. So but, that, that's, that actually should be pretty fun. I think what if is maybe only also six episodes? I think so. Yeah, if, only six if, or seven. If not, they're keeping quiet on any of the rest of it, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That should be a lot of fun. Like, very much looking forward to that. Um, the newest trailer for Shang-Chi, that looks really cool. I'm I'm hoping that... Um, as I did like Black Widow, but Black Widow kind of followed a lot of the tropes usually Marvel movies kind of do. So I'm hoping Shang-Chi is a little different. Um, I won't... I, I, I was to say I won't lie. I liked the actual trailer less than the teaser trailer. Um, I agree. I like the teaser trailer more. Yeah, I think I that the teaser trailer like it got me amped. Moves up. at a quick pace. Yes, it's got a lot of cool visuals. Um, it, it gives me just enough story stuff that yeah. I'm like, ooh, interesting. The I new, do, the I new, want to see more. The new trailer feels like it had more story to tell, yeah. and that it kind of slowed the pace down a little. And and I I won't lie, and it's just because I love the comics it kills me that the ten rings of the mandarin are not rings, rings. you wear on your fingers they're like the combat rings I, that you would use in, in Chinese martial arts which like, I, which is kind of really cool it's, it's it a, does make it's sense it's a great re-adaptation of the idea it, I, I kind of I kind of like it in that it aspect it where sad. no I, I get it I get that um, it's more of a traditionalist comic book wise you know I do get that you know I, I, I'm, by this time, I am welcoming change. I'm, I am surprised and that it bothers me this much. <laughs> <laughs> You're actually surprised that it bothers out of, you. Out of all the things I, that nerds complain about about the MCU, what, this is apparently which, my sticking point. Which is interesting because of the fact that they use those type of we weapons in Chinese lore. The fact that, in my opinion, you can do more fighting ways 
with that sure. than Ten Rings itself. And, and especially the idea that you can like project them out and use them as like an extension yeah, of just, your arms and, then, and laser whip or whatever. Um, uh, and, uh, each of them is supposed to have a different power, so like I guess you you're gonna see like each of them change a different color. To whereas I guess with the rings there was there's only one projected of each, what power you're using. Each ring was a different so, power. So yeah. you would have like your heat beam, your ice beam, your disintegrate beam, your X ray beam, whatever the the shoop do. Um I don't know, there's there's also a little bit of me that in the comics, um in the comics the, the Mandarin's rings, they are they're the classic like it's science that's so far advanced it seems like magic. But the idea is magic versus science. The yeah. Mandarin versus Iron Man. Iron Man. Man. Uh, a man of faith versus a man of science. Um, and it looks like we're basically just getting, oh, it's science going up against a, a guy who just uses kung fu. And it... No, I think it has something to do with mythical as well because yeah. they're introducing a lot of mythical characters. But I think that myth is going to be too. explained as being like, oh, well, it's alien space science. Like... I don't know. I think I think we're gonna get that Thor and Loki that. kind of thing, where it's just like, I, oh, I, they're gods, but they're just space gods. We'll we'll see, because yeah. I I don't know. I, I think Marvel's with with Shang Chi. I think Marvel's kind of trying to dive into their own like you know my, mythical you know type of I don't want to say magic, but like um, I think they want to kind of like extend to not just science or kind of magic in a way. But I, I think they want to kind of, when it comes to Shang-Chi, they kind of want to get out of that. Because if that's the case, I'd be very disappointed if it's science again. Especially with this type of story. You know, there's a reason why you introduce Shang-Chi. And mythology is one of the reasons why I wanted them to do a movie like this. Because a lot of kung fu type of movies are sort of like that. Sure. You know, so... Well, it's because most... most most kung fu movies well, don't really well, have no, not to mention the fact that science. in the trailer when he's under the water he does confront a dragon some form of dragon yeah yeah so that I don't think that has to do with science sure you know unless he like you know sniffed ecstasy and now he sees a dragon and you know Mandarin's like you know it's magic ecstasy bro yeah <laughs> no I'm kidding man <laughs> it's that, space ecstasy that, that, that shit's we, we weighed that in the fucking this, science this like is that Cree ecstasy man like this stuff yeah. is harder so I, I'm just hoping that like you know the ten rings are maybe a combination of science and magic sure and you know in turn kind of like you know hint at like you know you know, there's a certain villain that like uses science and magic, but you know, I digress. Sure. I just um, doctors the the, the character that you're alluding to <laughs> did learn magic from Tibetan monks. That's where he that's where he forged uh, his science based mm. the rest of his science based yeah. armaments. So I mean, you could do something He's along so those lines. Complicated. Um, I love it. He's such a complicated character. I love it. it He's it just, so evil, but yeah, he learned magic from Tibetan monks. Yeah. Like, Welcome to 1960 story. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, lovely. Idea. Everybody it's learned great. magic from Tibetan monks, like Jesus Christ. <laughs> but um, Danny Rand, Doctor Strange, right? Everybody. We'll see what happens because yeah. you know, at the end of the trailer, we saw Abomination and Wong. Yeah. Although I wasn't a fan of like Feige coming out and saying, "Yeah, that was Wong too. That was Wong." Well, that's, I do like him confirming it. I yeah, but at the same time, I'm like, if I first watched it, I'm like, "Hey, that's Wong." Like, it would, you know, because... It's, to me, it's... You shouldn't have put this in the trailer to begin In the first with. place, yes. This, it's like, like putting Michael Keaton at the end of the Morbius trailer. Yeah. Although that intel is something different. Yeah, that's going to be a whole mess in and of mess itself. Mess in and of itself, so it's, we can throw that to It's the side. almost more to me... It would be like putting the fact that the characters got dusted in Infinity War in the trailer for Infinity War. Like... It, and I and I don't even think Abomination and Wong is going to be a big part of Shang Chi. Probably not. I think it's just well, that's um, why I would we're, leave we're, it out. We're, we're getting yes, I agree because we're getting Doctor Strange two with Wong being in it, and uh, Abomination is going to be in the She Hulk series. So I am so I, it's I am glad to see the Abomination making a comeback. I agree. I, and I think he's got one of the coolest monster villain looks. In the Marvel comics, yeah, and they gave um, him his fins, yeah, and he looks he fingers. looks greener too. Yeah, he looks yeah. more like his comic counterpart yes. than the MCU counterpart. Yeah, which I, I'm also fine. Which with. he looks he looks great. Yeah, yeah, I think he looked really cool. I'm I'm very ex and, and that's one of those things where like, even when Agents of Shield was canon, um, when they were like, oh man, what about the Abomination after Shield fell? And I was like, oh, are they going to fight the Abomination? 
And then they were like, no, nah, we still got him doped up. And I was like... Yeah, that's what it was. Cole says, uh, like, no, nah, Blonsky's still dope up yeah. in prison and up in Alaska. I was like, oh, it's I like, really wanted... I really wanted to see him again. I'm like, man, like, I wanted to see a Mill Blonsky, uh, man. I wanted to see Tim Roth as Abomination. Yeah. Like, it also, people are mm-hmm. saying that, like, they show Abomination because of this. It's possible that um, in the future, uh, Zemo could be forming his own little Thunderbolts team. I... At this, at, at this, this point, point, you know, everybody, this point, everybody's Zemo's doing using something. everybody to form a Thunderbolts team. Exactly. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Or we can get the Masters of Evil. Who knows? Yeah. This, if we do, great. It, it doesn't yeah. feel like that's what we're building towards. We're, we're building towards a multiversal, a multiversal conflict, conflict of some kind. Yeah, which could eventually, in in the long run, lead to a Secret Wars sure. Avengers movie. I, I, it's, I would love to see like a Dark Avengers or a Thunderbolts style team. Yeah. Um, but again, for for my money, it doesn't feel like we're building towards that right now. Not right the, now. No. It feels like Young <clears throat> Avengers, probably some new version of what the Avengers actually look like. And some kind of broad, beyond even the cosmic conflict, like I said, some kind of multiversal conflict. Mm-hmm. Even if you're just putting two, three or four versions of Kang against each other, and one of them's joined the Avengers because he needs to stop the evil versions of Iron himself. Lad. Whatever, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it just it doesn't feel like that's what we're building towards. And like, there's a degree like we were dealing with Earth stuff, and then in order to get bigger, you were dealing with cosmic stuff. And then in order to get bigger, we're dealing with multiversal stuff. It feels like you finish this conflict and then you shrink back down again. Yeah. That's when I would I would think you would do your Dark Avengers or, or a Thunderbolts kind of thing where it's more about your character stories, reestablishing a new status quo. Because again, Marvel doesn't seem to be aiming for a like reset point. So I don't think we'll see like a recasted Tony Stark or a recasted uh, Steve Rogers. Well, that means you got to refocus down on who your cast is and then rebuild mm-hmm. everybody back up. So, again, I, I don't feel like that's where we're going towards. I get why everybody wants it. but I, I get it, too. Um, especially since Fave, Phase 5 is probably going to feature mutants yeah, to a strong degree. Yeah, we're, that's true. At, at the very least, we're probably going to get a X-Men movie of some kind. Yeah. Yeah, I know. With Marvel Cinematic yeah. Universe's casting of X-Men characters yeah. because I, I was afraid to like mention to you that like oh because of the multiverse we could be getting Fox no. X-Men characters never never <laughs> no I, I have seen that Kevin Feige took a meeting with Hugh Jackman Hugh Jackman I don't know what that means I hope it doesn't mean he's going to be Wolverine again I I am on the record and I'm a hardliner for let's leave that box of stuff over let's here please do leave that alone Please cast two Jackman. The only the person MCU. you have to bring to that certain universe is Deadpool. Yeah, and Deadpool and works because none of his rules matter anyway. Exactly, and it's perfect. Yeah, cast yeah. Hugh Jackman. Sure, put him in some role that's not Wolverine. Thousand percent, I'm, I'm down for yeah. it. Yeah, please don't make him Wolverine. Please right. don't make him Wolverine. To uh, along those lines, um, since apparently we're just gonna keep talking about MCU stuff, we had the Deadpool Korg. Free man yes. trailer, which is kind free, of a free guy. Free, free guy. Go. You know, it's brilliant because that's the name of the character and it's the name of the movie. Yeah. You know, so that makes sense. That's that was <laughs> maybe not. I don't typically clever. watch commercials when I'm watching TV. Like at all. I'm a I'm a big channel server. Yeah. I will switch between six different shows if I don't have to watch a commercial. Uh, I just scrolled through Facebook and it came up as I was scrolling. But that's I, I watched all of that because yeah. I was like, "What?" I was gonna say this? it's only like four minutes long. Yeah, so yeah, it was cute. It was cute. Uh, I thought it was brilliant because of the fact that both Ryan Reynolds and Taika are in the movie. I didn't feel like Taika was very interesting as Korg. I agree. Like I he, def- Ryan Reynolds was the funny, the hilarious one. Yeah, and Korg was it was just more of just it. Be cool. Yeah. That's about it. You know, oh, he's got it's the class cutter. You know, it's like, okay, cool. Yeah. You know, it was more like that as where Ryan Reynolds, you know, was like, so, uh, you know, it's just a movie new guy, you know, and Korg says something stupid, and Ryan Reynolds is like, you got a show on Disney Plus, don't you, fuck face. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, uh, I was raised by avocados. He's like, kill me now, yeah. you know, just, yeah, it's great. It's like, you know, which I know everybody in the comments, I'm just going to pause it here because I know everybody in the comments is going to be like, yeah, comparisons to Ryan Reynolds, which I got to say is very insulting. (laughs) 
I love how he just pokes fun out of himself. It's well, brilliant. we, um, the missus and I have also seen, I think it was car commercials, using MCU characters. Yes. Loki, Loki and Wanda. Loki, Sam, Sam Wilson as oh, well. I have not seen Oh, you haven't seen the yet. Sam? No. Yeah. But it's, uh, actually, there's a commercial where it, it's, it combines all three commercials in the Oh, one. really? Yeah. Okay. That's, there's definitely a part of me where I'm like, I can't, again, if, if you had told... 1994 Ben who was just getting into comic books and like mm-hmm. I never I never really got picked on for being into comics like I was already a qual- quiet kid and like I just kind of got left alone for the most part but like I knew comic books had like the social stigma to them I'd seen the Simpsons I know yeah. who comic book guy is um, but to know that like now they're using those characters and those actors to try and sell vehicles to the general populace, not even nerds or comic geeks specifically, but just yeah. people. Buy a new Land Rover. Wanda says so. <clears throat> if you had the choice, what a, what a to world! Do it. Yeah, I know. That's what I said. Like when they first showed that Loki commercial, and he takes the dude's car. He's like, if you had a chance to, you know, start over, whatever, would you do it or if, something like that? If only we could get those actors to make ads that sold comic books now, yeah. as opposed to vehicles. Cause, cause the comic Sam, book industry might not be dying. Because cause Sam's is uh, a dude's trying to break in this lady's car, and he flies down and he stops the guy. Nice. Yeah, that's that. That was his. That's cool. Yeah, I thought that was really cool too, and uh, I thought Wanda's was adorable. Yeah. Yeah, I love hers. That's that was, that's out of the three. That's my favorite one is hers, because you know she yeah, and then she does that. It's the and the way she looks at the camera. Yeah, it's that then, like. The little Bill witch, style it, yeah, exactly. It's so bewitched. Episodes, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think that's why I love it because yeah. the only thing in color is the car, and she turns the lights on. Like I think hers is like the best one. Yeah. I think it's adorable. And me, and, and and plus, like especially after seeing Wandavision got nominated for all these Emmys too, do you know? Like I thought that was really cool. So, yeah. What I but, think. Um, oh yeah. No, I was going to say, I think uh, pretty much, you know... I think we've covered everything. Yeah, the lay of good lay on the land. I think we basically covered everything. Um, One thing I do have to say is if we are setting up for a Secret Wars Avengers movie, like maybe 10 years down the line, um, I have to say, and I have to throw this as a personal fan, like, could we get God Emperor Doom? We got to get Doctor Doom first. I know. You got to set up. Well, I, this is this is this is me saying that Doctor Doom has already been set up. You know, like and that's the thing. If we get God Emperor Doom, like he could be the biggest bad of the bad. I'm just saying. So if that comes up, I can't wait. But you're right. First we have to establish Doctor Doom, which Marvel will do brilliantly because yeah. they always establish their big villains in a great way. And um, we could say that Nathaniel Richards, you know, Jonathan Majors, he did a good job. He was a little obnoxious at first. But, like I said, you know, in contrast, this is Nathaniel Summers. This is him as Nathaniel Summers. Nathaniel so, Richards. Richards. Nathaniel Summers is Cable. That's a different time <laughs> traveler. That's right. That's Nathaniel. a different franchise. All these names. Yeah. Peter Quill, Peter Parker, you know, yeah. Um, but just him playing the part of Nathaniel Richards that way, like, he could completely play Kang the Conqueror differently. You know, and, so I'm looking forward to that. And in terms of setting up their villains well, as obnoxious as I found this version of He Who He Who Remains, um, I do think they sold the concept of the threat really well. Yes, like very just well. even the very fact well. that Loki runs back to the TVA and he's like Terrifying, yeah. yeah this man is terrifying. He, he wasn't scared of Thanos bef- before yeah. he knew Thanos killed him. He wasn't scared of the forces of space. Everything Loki's gone up against Hela, uh, the Grand Master, none of these things frightened him. Even Surtur in the end of the Asgard yeah. didn't phase him. But the threat posed by Nathaniel throughout all of existence scared the absolute crap out of him. And he what? comes back and he's telling them. So that's that's a pretty good indicator of the threat level here. What what did Loki say in the first episode about the TVA to um, when he found out that all the um, Infinity Stones were just paperweights and so the Tesseract? Huh? What did he say to that one? I can't remember. The guy's it was Casey. Name. Casey, that's Casey. right. He asked Casey about the TVA, 
Is this is this the most powerful? Is this the greatest power? Is, in ex- this I think he says existence. Existence. I think because I don't think he says universe. Yeah, I think he says this is the greatest power in existence. So by the end, pretty much, yeah. So now he knows, like him going to uh, Mobius yeah. and saying, like, this man is terrifying. This man, we don't know what we're dealing with. There's an infinite number of There's them coming. an infinite number of them coming. He himself was so scared, and that <laughs> that plot point in the first episode of him saying that has come true. Yeah. It is the most powerful thing. And it wasn't the TVA. It was a man. Well, And, it's, and, and different even, variations of himself. And even playing on that idea, the idea that the most powerful thing in the universe was created to hold this thing at bay. And with yes, this thing gone... Bay. Now this is on the loose. Yeah, you got exactly. nothing. You got nothing that can stop this. No one's prepared. Yeah, no one's uh, prepared. And that's going to be, hopefully, it's going to be fun to watch. Hopefully, it's going to be very fun to watch, and hopefully, we won't get any more goddamn spoilers from toys about what's coming. I don't like, and I'm pretty good about like I'll snooze some of the Marvel groups that I'm a part of on on Facebook so I can avoid stuff. But we're like, we're half a year out from Spider Man. Exactly. Do I just have to not be a part of anything? We, we haven't even been introduced to like Eternals toys or figures. Yeah. You know, we just got introduced to Shang Chi figures. We just got introduced to What If toys yeah. pops, which comes out next month. Just next month. Yeah. Spider Man doesn't come out until December. Why are you already introducing us to these pops? Yeah. Damn you, Funko! Damn you, Funko! Curse you! <sighs> Anywho. Well, on that note. Uh, we'll leave you guys for now. We'll probably be back for what if. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, why not? Yeah, we, we we did have a good time watching the series. Um, like we said, there's a couple of twists and turns, a couple of missteps there that we kind of agreed on. But overall, really good series. Uh, we still believe so far, Wandavision is our favorite of the series so far. But all three of them have been very good. They have taken the MCU forward. So we can officially say goodbye to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and hello to the Marvel Cinematic Multiverse. Yeah. And on that note, this is Ben. I'm Efren, and we'll see you when we see you. Peace.